got a report of a camp that was brand new. You can allegedly see it from the fence line of behind this Flyers gas station. The blue tarp up in the woods. We might have to take the truck a little bit off road to find it. But all of this property over here off of Plaza Drive is all private property, privately owned, privately maintained. Um, and we get a lot of different camps and encampments out here. Yeah, this seems to be a pretty popular spot out here during Very the... Popular. Very popular. Trying to find make our way back and see if we can't stumble upon Good eyes. I would have never seen that. Hello, police. Anybody home? Hello, police. Anybody home? Nobody home today. But you can see. We respect that uh, certain homeless individuals have for the community. Um, we've been doing a lot of. Look right down here. Oh shit! You're gonna see the kind of stuff that we're dealing with. And I'd venture to guess that in this mess. That's not going to be the only one. Um, That's got to create a huge problem for people trying to clean this place up too, right? It does. It, I mean, you have a property owner that, let's say the property owner wants to come out and do a cleanup of the area. They come out and they start stumbling upon drug paraphernalia, needles, um, spoons, different types of things. Heroin, for instance, is extremely... Um, it's extremely uh, easy to transmit via transdermal touch. So if you come out and you pick up a spoon or a bottom of a, of a can um, or somebody's, God forbid, somebody's needle, um, you can easily pick up some side effects from that, from that exposure. So it's just dangerous for them to come out, which then again makes it our problem to come out, collect it um, professionally and dispose of these things professionally. Um, I'll pick this up and we'll get it to a sharps container where it'll be properly destroyed. But I mean, this is just how do you how do you stay on top of of this kind of behavior and this kind of trash? I can't. I don't have a vehicle, despite the fact that we have the pickup. I don't have a vehicle that can pull right up here that you can shovel this amount of trash into. Um, but this is what we deal with. These are the Luckily, I don't see any campfire sites, but this is what each camp out here looks like Jeez. a lot of times. So we'll go to some of the other ones and see if those have been picked up uh, from when arrests have made or were made a couple weeks ago. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Gotta, could the person be a, a veteran? 
maybe. Um, these things are very often picked up at, uh, at um, U.S. military surplus stores as well. Um, U.S. Army markings. Um, they haven't used this woodland camo in many, many, many years as far mm -hmm. as I know. So it could be a uh, somebody with veteran experience. And we have the vets hall in town and we have veteran services in town that could help people get into housing and not be in this situation or get into rehab and not be in this situation. Um, but at some of our trainings, we're hearing from veterans affairs that are saying people aren't coming. They're not coming down and knocking on the door and saying, can you help me? Um, instead, they're out here and they're in this mess. But again, that's is just because we find this doesn't necessarily mean that this person is Mr. or Mrs. Hernandez. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they were in the military, but it could be a clue. Yeah. Find out here. Let's we'll see anything that would uh, identify a camp occupant. Part time employment application, maybe for the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. A uh, subject by the name of Matthew who lists his address as the hospitality house. 1262 two Sutton Way. Well, this certainly isn't the hospitality house, and I would venture to guess that they wouldn't want uh, they wouldn't want the land treated like this either. Anyway, let me. Uh, I'm gonna get a little container here. Do some trash recycling. Needle. Right. Convince the city to buy a masticator and give us the opportunity to come out and masticate this stuff. If we had a if we had property owners that took care of their overgrown vegetation and we had or we had a masticator to be able to do it ourselves and bill them later on you would see this immediately from the roadway and maybe it wouldn't get as bad as it is. Um, excuse me. Cook for. Um, but as it is, you get 20 yards, 30 yards off of not even maybe 20. Yeah. 20, 30 yards off of the main trail and off of what is easily seen from these restaurants or, or businesses. And you're deep enough in the brush to where you can, you can be in there throwing trash all around and establishing a camp. I don't know where these holes come from. There was one of those in there. I don't know where this comes from. But uh, all of this used to be um, used to be county's property, county the sheriff's department's jurisdiction. But as far as I know, we've taken over jurisdiction of everything from here down to Idaho, Maryland. So out to Brunswick, this is all ours now, and we're going to patrol it uh, like we have for many years. Um, that's another thing that we see very often is the campers will be in the quote-unquote sheriff's department jurisdiction, but right there on the border of the city, and the... Uh, so the sheriff's department gets very few calls regarding the fact that they're out there, but the police department ends up facing a lot of the uh, a lot of the problems for it. So this kind of stuff. Now this is ours, but this is just one site. We'll go to some more sites. You can see how what a pain in the butt it is to get into some of these locations. <laughs> yeah. uh, stop! Come on back. They're pretty, they're all pretty cooperative with us. Yeah. I mean, they very rarely ever will run. Um, I don't immediately recognize this guy. Let's go, let's go talk to him. Watch the dust.
He was supposed to be. So, if you rewind the tape, um, you rewind the tape maybe three or four years. It took roughly 20 minutes to book somebody in the jail. Now, um, it takes roughly 40 to 45 minutes to book somebody in the jail. Hmm. And the officer, the booking officer, is no longer allowed to be anywhere near the person being booked in the jail and so if you know say let's let's say the person is uh is we we discover things out in the field that would be important information to know um, for the nurse in the jail we're not allowed to be there or listen to the questioning or the answers um, we don't have an opportunity to tell them really uh, if somebody goes to the jail and they're under the influence of controlled substance and they say I'm not under the influence of a controlled substance but they're acting very strange they're acting uh, bizarre maybe um, many times the nurse will say well I don't know what he's on and you know we're not comfortable with it so they'll deny us and they'll turn us around and we have to go to the hospital and go through the whole process of taking up time officers time taxpayer dollars and everything else to get this person checked out by a doctor who comes to the conclusion that the person is under the influence and says he's able to be in jail. And we take that back, we give it to the jail, and they say, okay, you can come in now. But there's a lot of little hoops that we have to jump through, and in all honesty, it's becoming such a pain with myself and two other officers working that if I was to lose an officer for 45 minutes in the booking process and a five-minute drive up, five-minute drive back, you're... You're talking almost an hour worth of an officer's time to take a misdemeanor crime suspect to jail, and that and that leaves. That's no big deal necessarily because we we work 12-hour shifts. It's what leaves the other officers out here with. If if I go to a priority call and my partner goes to a priority call, and the other officers at the jail, we can't back each other up. We're not around. Um, it's not a streamlined process like it once was. It's it's a pain. It's very difficult to deal with the booking process. We arrested two drunken publics last week. Um, they were cited behind Safeway for drunken public. They were given citations and allowed to leave with court date. Very like within 10, 15 minutes, they were over at Western Sierra Medical Clinic underneath the employee entrance stairs, more open containers, more drinking in public. Um, this time they were they were more thoroughly evaluated for junk in public and they ended up being arrested. One of them was already on probation for junk in public crimes and had terms of shall not possess or consume alcohol. You now here she was. So you see these these same faces over and over and over. Um, and there's just, there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of, uh, attempts being made to say, wait a minute, I want a better life. I'm going to go through the process at hospitality house. I'm going to go through the process at social services. I'm going to go through the process at, uh, behavioral health. I'm going to get all my ducks in a row. Um, 
not many of them, I would honestly say not many of them, are severely mental health patients. They are, they have drug addictions, they have alcohol addictions, and that causes a type of psychosis, but yeah, but if you get them sober, you can deal with them. They're, they're just like you and I. Um, the thing is, is there's no incentive to stay sober. If you book them into jail, they're only going to be in there for a little, for maybe a few hours, and then they're going to be back out. Jeez. Um, I arrested a guy for felony identity theft, violation of probation, possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, the list goes on, and he's out within 24 hours. I'm still trying to I'm still trying to identify the victim whose credit card he was using fraudulently at, at five or six different stores around town. And he's already back out he's on the street. Back out. So right down here is where uh, we made four arrests last month. I wanted to check out that camp and see if it looks like the end. Let's go down there. So, hey, all of this property is private property, okay? Um, can't be out here hanging out, even though it's nice under the shade tree, I get it. Um, Got to find other arrangements, okay? Can you guys pack up and maybe head out? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Thank Let's you. do that now. Appreciate it. We had, to, we had arrested four people for hanging out down here last month. Looks like the camp's been cleaned up, but you can see where the fire used to be. What's your name, sir? Joe. My name's Brian. Brian. Nice to meet you. Yep. Hello, ma'am. What's your name? I'm Kathy. Kathy. Joe, this is yours. Kathy, I don't know if we've ever met. My name's Brian. Nice to meet you. This pile of trash looks like it's been here for quite some time. Um, probably from the previous camp that was here where we made a bunch of arrests. Um, but I can see right down here, this guy. Ah. Is going to be a telltale um, little broken piece of a meth pipe. I don't know where the rest of the glass is. Hopefully it's not in the creek. But, uh, you know, just some more evidence of drug use that goes on out here. It makes it unsafe, you know. You never know yeah. who you're going to run across when you're out here. And, uh, what they might be, what they might be on. Okay. Now, the things that people should remember are most of our problem transients, most of our, our thieving kind of people that you don't feel safe around, those guys are, um, they'll, they'll sleep in the park during the day, they will um, walk around and stay up all night, um, or they will make arrangements with people to go sleep on their couches, or, you know, a squat in their garage or something like that um, but it's a very transient lifestyle because they don't have a specific place but they float around they kind of fit that couch surfer um, label and those ones are difficult to keep up with because when they're on probation they don't have a home for you to go find the stolen property in. you know they don't have a uh, if they don't have it right on them, right when you search them, a lot of times you're not going to find it. I arrested a guy yesterday. We arrested him again today. He was arrested twice yesterday. Jesse Crawford. He got arrested for... I saw him behind the bowling alley or walking around somebody's um, backyard behind their garage door and um, right, right behind the bowling alley. He's on search and seizure for theft charges. Search him. He's got a prescription bottle 
not in his name that um, hadn't been reported stolen. A couple hours later, the guy whose prescription it was calls up and says, hey, my car got, my car got in and I got a bunch of stuff missing. But a GPS device also found on Jesse Crawford. Wow. My prescriptions found on Jesse Crawford. And my uh, and a Bluetooth kind of um, uh, visor clip Bluetooth thing for his car. Um, that one's still outstanding. Jesse Crawford is now the suspect of that theft. So we go and we um, interview him for that. We have fresh probable cause that he did the theft, and we take him into custody again. So site number one, mine was was a citation arrest number one. Arrest number two was booking into jail. He's already back out and has stolen more stuff over at Kmart today just before we got together and is now back in jail. And he'll be back out by 7 p.m. So this is the, the door that we keep rolling through. You know, what are we supposed to tell people? Like, oh, no, it's fine. It's safe. And we do a great job. Like we get, we make a lot of arrests. We take more calls for service than if you were to combine all of Chucky PD's calls and all of our and all of Nevada City's calls, we're well beyond that. I would say that with certainty, we are the we are the department in Nevada County that takes the most calls for service. I don't know if that is if you were to count Nevada County if that would be the case. But uh, definitely Truckee and, and Nevada City, we take more calls than both of those combined. situation a lot better that she gets up to the hospital and gets taken care of. That gal before uh, mental health came out couldn't even identify herself by name or give her date of birth. Mental health luckily was able to come out and give us that info but that's a bad alcohol problem. And uh, she's in the right place. Being in the back of the patrol car wouldn't be the right place for her today. Yeah. She definitely needs to go to the hospital. So we're looking for a guy that's wanted out of Nevada County and Placer County. Got it. The bail bondsmen are looking for him. The counties are looking for him. Hey, 
just by like a half hour. Those type things going on. See, now we have an ordinance for people climbing on the table. And I'm going to say that that is a violation of somebody climbing on the table. You can't climb on the table. You can only sit at, at the benches. But that is certainly, most certainly, not a bed or a chase lounge. So, I don't know what this other person is doing behind that gray wall inside there. That's an adult inside that playground. <laughs> drive past the park or when you consider taking your little man to the park, like, what do you see that bothers you? Homeless people. Homeless people? Yeah, like the groups. The groups? Yeah. So what about, like, this guy over here? Does that bother you? I mean, no, I'm just, I'm just sleeping. I don't really, because there's no fence around the gate, yeah. around the park. Okay. But would it be fair to say that it's actually, like, a more a bigger of a group? In the same way. I live very close too. And, you know, my kids want to go to the park too, and it's like. Uh, I can't drive right now, so like, it's just a bit close to the park. Yeah, <laughs> see, and so when you walk to the park, you have to find a park that's safe. Yeah. It's making it nice, you know? Yeah. Well, less, less of a problem. Alright, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good day.